The Meta Horizon Store is one of the biggest platforms for VR games. It's crucial for you to know how to publish there, especially now that App Lab is gone and it's been replaced with the new Early Access feature. We need to understand the Early Access process and also how to properly organize our Unity project to get things ready for submission. If it's your first time meeting me, I am Fistful of Shrimp. I make shrimple Unity tutorials with a focus on VR, and I'm a shrimp. So what is Meta's new Early Access feature? Well, the idea behind it, it's supposed to allow developers to release a game in a work in progress kind of version while still being able to charge some money for it so they can get some funding and then also develop a feedback loop with some real users out there. I do want to emphasize that you should probably be charging for your app. So you want to make sure your game is in a state where you'd be comfortable charging users for it. Because if you see here, if you purchase the app in early access, you have full access to the app in its current state but you also keep access to the app after the full version launches. Now, if you've released an early access game and it's free right now, then you can actually later, when you're fully releasing it, change the price and increase it. But those users who downloaded it for free, it sounds like they're going to have access to that app in its full version forever. So as your game is still being developed, if it isn't in a place where you feel comfortable charging people, then go over to SideQuest and make sure you keep experimenting over there and getting feedback. First things first, you want to make sure that you have the Android module installed with whatever version of Unity you're using for your project. That is because the Quest is a Android device. So to do that, you just need to come over to installs in the Unity hub, go over to whatever version you're using, and then add module. And then just add the Android build support with OpenJDK and Android SDK and NDK tool. For this example, all I've done is made a new project using Unity's new VR template. So it has already set up the environment for me. I already have the XR Interaction Toolkit installed, and I'm going to start going over the settings that you need in order to get your game ready for submission to the Meta Horizon Store. So if we come over to Edit, Project Settings, we can start going over everything that we need. And you can see here under XR Plugin Management that this project is using OpenXR for both the PC build and the Android build, but we are particularly interested in the Android build. We need to make sure we have certain settings over under player. It's always good to change this. I'm going to change it to mine. Other things you might want to consider if you want to have a little splash screen and show something before the game starts up, you could do that here. But that's all customization stuff. The really important things are getting this ready for the meta store. So things you'll want to double check, you want to make sure that the color space is set to linear. For the graphics API, you can have it as Vulkan now. That is a fully supported graphics API. You can also do Open GLES 3. Multi-threaded rendering should be set to true, and so should static batching. The texture compression format that you want to use is ASTC. And then if we scroll down here a little bit, we will see identification and configuration. We want the minimum API level to be set to API level 29 or Android 10. And then the target API level should be set to level 32 or Android 12L. Scripting backend needs to be IL2 CPP. And then we also want to make sure that the install location is set to automatic. And finally, for target architectures, just make sure you don't have ARM v7, just ARM64. Last thing I'll mention here is every single time you update your app and submit a new build, you need to increase the bundle version code. So this guy right here, just change it to two, three, four, every time you make a new build and just make sure you also update your version number here as well. With those settings out of the way, we're gonna come down here and we are going to find the publishing settings and open that up. Now, in order to publish to the Meta Store, they are going to require us to use a key store. What a key store is, is in Android development, it's a way that we can sign our files and ensure that it's authentic and we are the authorized developer for this product. What it needs is a key store and with that key store it'll have a password. You connect it to your application and then when you go to build if you have the right password in and key store then it's going to say okay this is the actual developer and that way people can't just mod or update willy-nilly with your own application. So just as a quick example, well, I am going to make a key store. I'll hit key store manager and I will create a new one in a dedicated location. And I've made a folder on my desktop called super secret key store. And I'm just going to make it there and I'll call this the shrimp.
Now here it's going to require that you need a password and you need to have an alias. Now you'll notice here there's actually two things here saying password confirm password password confirm password. So what's going on here is this is going to be the password for the key store itself and then we also need a key associated with the key store and that will have its own password as well. Now you can have them be the same thing but a security expert would probably tell you please for the love of God don't do that. So don't do that. Now I will say when you are publishing you do have to have the same alias that you're using and the same key store. So do not lose these. When you're saving these in the file that you chose, make sure you make a backup of that file just in case something gets deleted. Because if you do lose these, then it's going to be no way that you can actually update your app anymore. So I'm just going to choose to add the key. And you can see here, since I clicked yes, it automatically connected everything. But if you don't have the key store connected, all I have to do is select custom key store and then go find where your key store was, my super secret key store here, open it up, and then you would just type in your passwords here. So this is gonna be the one for the key store. This is gonna be the one for the alias that you're using. With the key store out of the way, we are just about ready to start building. But the last thing we need to do is make a custom Android manifest. So in order to get an Android manifest, we need to create a custom one. All we have to do is press custom main manifest and it will actually generate this for us. And you can see this is where it's generated it, but it isn't good enough right now. We have to doctor it up a bit. To doctor it up, we are going to go ahead and get out of this screen and we are gonna go look it up. And you'll find it in the Android folder and I'll double click it. And so this is our Android manifest. If you've watched my previous tutorial on submitting to App Lab, you'll know that this is where things get very tricky and painful. And that's because some things can be customized. Some apps need things that other ones don't. And so there's really no way I can cover every single use case, but I can at least give a very general starting off point. Now, if you want to read more about Android manifests and how Meta wants their structured, you can do so here and there's actually some starting off code that you could copy and paste. And it will tell you down here, there's a few things that you'll need to change in it as well. So I'm gonna link this down below. Make sure to check it out so you can understand really what's going on here. Now I have done a ton of experimenting. I have tried copying and pasting the code from the website and I had to adjust some things. I've also used the Meta SDK to generate an Android manifest and both things I found were lacking a few stuff that I had to add in. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste what I have added and thrown together. And I do have some examples in here as well. Now, if you want, the source code is always provided on my Patreon, but along with the source code, you can also join my Patreon and get cool things like this little shrimpo model, or you can come over to my collections and see some of my courses. You can watch my Unity VR tutorials from YouTube ad free. And I do have some private ones like these on design patterns. But with the plug out of the way, now I can talk about this Android manifest. So one thing I really wanna point out here is that this line right here isn't necessarily required, but what will happen sometimes is you will have plugins, tools, assets that you'll add to your project and it'll actually automatically add permissions that you don't necessarily want or Meta won't even allow you to have. So to get rid of things like that, this is a good example is used to add audio recording requirements all the time. Now, if your game has social aspects to it and you want to record the microphone, then go ahead and make sure you allow the permission to be there. But if it doesn't have that and you don't have a good reason, Meta will deny your application. So if you ever have an add-on or some kind of request that's saying, oh, you're requesting a restricted permission here, like record audio, if you don't have a good reason for it, you need to remove it. This is how you remove it is a line like this. Now with that, everything here should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. One thing I wanna make sure I do is update my package name because it is set to something very generic and I want it to match up here. And I can do that easily by just toggling this. So I'm gonna turn off the override and then turn it back on and you'll see it replaced my name. With everything in place, let us start our first build. So I'm gonna come over to build profiles. And if this looks funky, it's cause I'm using Unity 6. It's not officially out yet, but if you don't have this, you should see something similar. And what you want to do is you want to switch platforms. So actually I'm already switched to Android right now, which is what you need to switch to. But if I wanted to switch back to Windows, I just hit switch platform with load for a minute. And so for Android, you just select it and hit switch platform. 
Next, we wanna make sure we have the right scene. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this scene list, and then I am going to add whatever open scene I have right now, which is the sample scene, and it looks like we're good. I'm gonna come back to Android, and let's get a build going. So I'm gonna hit build, and I've been doing this tutorial for a bit, so normally it would take you to this folder, and I always like adding a builds folder, so you know, right click, new folder, and name it builds. And you can see here I've already generated an APK from earlier, so I'm just going to, you know what, let me delete this. We're gonna, we're gonna do this fresh. So I am going to hit save. Oh, while well, it still thinks it's there, so I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. Now that the APK has been built, we can move over to the MetaQuest Developer Hub. If you don't have the MetaQuest Developer Hub, I will go ahead and link it down below. There are going to be additional steps that you'll have to do to make sure you can get everything set up and test things out with your headset, but that would make this video 30 minutes long, and I'm not going to dive into that. The link below should be able to guide you in how to do that. Now, when you get into the MetaQuest Developer Hub, you're going to want to come over to the App Distribution tab. Now, in order to make a new application, I am here in app distribution, and you would need to create a new app here by going to the Manage Developer Center. So that will bring up a whole new web page, and this acts as kind of your dashboard for managing all the different applications that you're going to publish. Now, one thing I'll mention is obviously you'll have to log in and create an account if you don't have an account already, and then you'll also need to verify some things before you're allowed to publish. So if you go under Org Verification, You'll see here that I'm verified with my business because, well, I have a business. But if you come down here, you have admin verification. And this is a way for you to verify if you don't have a business set up. Those are your two options. Once you're verified, you should be able to create a new app. And it's as simple as clicking this and then choosing the Meta Store and then choosing whatever name you want. Now, for this example, I've already created one called the Shrimping Test App that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And you can see here what we have are the different distributions over here. We have the version. So this is version one that we'll be releasing. And if I select it, you'll see here, we need to have a build. And I don't have one there because we haven't uploaded yet. So to upload it, all we'd have to do is minimize and come back here to the developer hub. I'm going to select the shrimping test app and I want to upload it to the alpha channel just to kick things off. So if you are going for production and don't want to mess with the alpha channel, that's fine. That's where you would do that. But I'm choosing alpha channel and then you would have to locate where your build is and then select the APK hit next. Here you want to make sure that you're targeting the devices that you're interested in targeting and there's a few other settings here we can play with but I'm not going to. So I'm going to hit upload and see if it yells at me. And look at that. It's like a Christmas miracle. It actually didn't yell at me. If we come over here we can also go to view build. Now that we are here, you can see what the build looks like. We have our package name looking good. We have the version code looking good and the version looking fine. This is all good, but you'll see up here, we have a new thing, age group self-certification. You just click start. And all it's really asking you is if you are intending this game to be for teens, and adults, 13 and up, mixed ages, and children. And if you choose these two, there's a few things that you have to consider when you are publishing on the Meta Store. So how you collect data, what data you collect is really important for these groups. I'm gonna go ahead and click this just so I don't have to stress about anything like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and confirm. Now that we have this set up in the alpha channel, we can look over the test results have run through the automatic testing that happens when you upload a new APK. And let's say, well, we have this in the alpha channel. It's time for this bad boy to get into production. So you see, we have these different channels here. We have alpha, beta. This is this is release candidate, RC, and then production. So this would simply go your least stable, experimental, more stable, even more stable, and then your super, super stable version. So let's just say this guy is really stable and it's ready to move up in life. So we're going to go ahead and boop this to the production store. Oh, and it's yelling at me because the age requirement is for some reason not selected, even though I already selected it. So let's come over here. Let's see why it is yelling at me. Mm, I'm not seeing anything there. Huh. All right. Well, I came back here and it looks like it's okay for me. To, I'm going to hit copy and see if it, yeah, yeah, I think it is moving it over to the production line. I'm going to go ahead and click off this and refresh it. Yeah, okay. So it gave me an error for no reason, and that is interesting. 
I, I can't explain that. So I'm going to move over to this. I'm going to view the channel and let's see here. Now we are in the production line. So this is gearing up our game to be ready to be posted to the meta store. Now, if we go over to app submissions, select this, it looks like we have some things to fill out. Again, you'll want to fill out this page. You might want to add some notes to the reviewer. Pricing, this is where you would choose either coming soon, pre-order, or full release. And then you could come over here. You would select whatever build you're going to be published. So I'm going to use this point one version and then we come over to meta app data. Oop. And it does get mad if you don't save on every single page. So save changes and then app metadata. Just like everything else, I trust that you can handle this. You'll fill out the description, long description, keywords, other things you want to look out here for. This is the new thing. This is early access. So you can enable early access. It'll give you a little label on your app that will say that it is early access. And this is really interesting here. It looks like you can only add this label of early access upon your initial submission, but it can be removed at any time. So it sounds like the label of early access can only be added the first time you submit something. So that's something to consider. I don't think you can enable it when you upload newer versions. So really think hard if you are ready to go to the meta store yet, especially if you're going to do early access. So you would select that you have different game modes to add, you have different things to fill out here. And you know, I don't care about saving right now. We have more details that you'll need to fill out. You have assets that you'll have to fill out as well. And then finally the content rating, which is not hard. All you have to do is fill out your email. And here you can just request a new certificate or use an existing certificate that you have, which is simply the International Age Rating Coalition. So, you know, how you rate games. That's all this is, is a little certificate. But yeah, you can just request a new one if you don't have it, and then you just attach it. That's it. Now, once you have filled out all the forms and done all the things, you have the build selected, you filled out all your app metadata, you've chosen what form of listing type you want, and then finally, you have filled out this, then you can save all the changes at every single step and hit submit for review. You can see here it's already taking a little bit longer because they're merging all those App Lab games over into the MetaQuest store now. So it might take a little time for them to review your current build, but that is the entire process. A few quick things I want to mention before I run away. If you come into project settings, if you're ever going to update your application, I'm going to reiterate, make sure you update the bundle code and the version number here. Please consider liking this video and sharing it with others if they need some help with this. I'm Fistful of Shrimp. I thank you, my patrons, for all your help. Without you, I can't do this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.